You're watching Power Nation. The Ford 300 was never designed for high horsepower turbocharged applications. Today, we push ours to the edge. I'm gonna go ahead and make the executive decision to make this the final run. It may I be the final run idea. anyway. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Today on Engine Power, we are getting back on one of the most popular and fun projects we've done in a long time, our Ford 300 inline six banger. Now this engine is currently in its naturally aspirated form and it's been through a couple iterations. Now if for some reason you haven't seen this engine before and you don't know how it got here, check this out. When we found the 300, it was attached to an industrial water sprayer. With a little work, we got it running in the dyno cell. In perhaps our quietest dyno session ever, the inline six produced 88 horsepower and 217 pound-feet of torque. This engine is the textbook definition of long, but not strong. We almost didn't want to crack open this relic of automotive history, but we were curious to find just how much power the 300 would make. We installed a hooker long tube header, followed by a Summit Racing HEI distributor sporting MSD wires. Here we go. Yep. A 625 CFM Street Demon came next, along with a set of Harlan Sharp 1.6 ratio roller rockers. The 300 really perked up, laying down 169 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. With the engine torn down, we honed the cylinders to accept a set of forged 4050 pistons designed for a 390 FE. We added a custom ground comp camshaft and wrapped total seal rings around the pistons. A Promax 73cc ported cylinder head took airflow to a whole new level. This new combination raised our compression ratio from a stock 8 to 1 to 9.95 to 1, and the engine received a stout power increase, putting out 270 horsepower and 338 pound-feet of torque. The next phase of this engine is very exciting and is something you've all been asking for. We are going to put some artificial atmosphere to this engine with a turbocharger. Now there aren't really any turbo kits available for this engine, so we're going to have to fabricate our own. And that's going to take some time and ingenuity, so we should get started. Absolutely. We had a couple different options when it came to what size turbocharger we want to run. Now your initial thought, just like us, is go big or go home. This one might be a little bit too big though. It's an 86 millimeter, and although it make great power, it would take a while to spool up. Our next option is a little bit too small. It's only a 62 millimeter. Now this turbo would work, but it's a little small, so it'd be a little less efficient at higher boost levels. This one though is just right. It has a 72 millimeter inducer wheel, a 68 millimeter exducer wheel, and a 0.81 aspect ratio, which is the relation between the exhaust inlet and the exducer wheel size. Now this one is a great balance between the previous two, but the turbo is only one part of the entire system. There's a couple other components we need to add. This is a VS Racing 50 millimeter wastegate that we got through Summit Racing. Now a wastegate is gonna relieve the exhaust gas pressure via a spring and valve. And this is gonna be really important for controlling the boost on the dyno. We also needed a blow off valve to relieve any extra boost pressure in the intake track when we close the throttle bleeds. Now before we can put any of this on, there's a few things we gotta take off our engine first to make room. We'll start with the intake manifold. It's an Offenhauser C-Series unit designed to increase power and torque through the RPM range. It has provisions for a square or spread bore flange, so it accepts a four barrel carburetor. I'll take all the tight ones, don't worry. Nice, nice. All right. Here comes the big one. Yep, grab that. That stuck pretty good there. Those are all out. Yep. Yeah, not too bad. Oh, yeah. There we go. Gravy. So, it looks really good. 
Since we have the intake and header off the engine, it's time to start working on how to get that exhaust gas back up to the turbocharger. So your first thing you would think of is let's get a header for it or build one. Well, there are no headers that are available and we are not going to build a custom one for it at this time. So we've decided to stay with cast iron. We have a couple of different examples here and we're going to start with the one that is stock for the engine. This is the log style manifold that is stock for the year of our engine. It is very compact and very tough, but there are a few problems with what we're trying to do with it. One, it has a very abrupt turn out of the exhaust, which makes it compact, but it reduces its cross-sectional area and it won't flow as well. Plus, it also has just one single small outlet in it, and it's going to be a problem if we try to make a bunch of power. So what we've decided to do is run a pair of split manifolds off a later EFI 300. Now, there's big advantages to running split manifolds. One, there's two outlets, so you have double the amount of area. And two, these are built kind of like a little tubular header, so they flow much better than the log style. And where they Y out, they will come together down into one single pipe, and we can get that under the engine way easier and get it up to the turbine wheel. Up next, first we mock up, then we rock. Uh up. -uh. Oh mm. my God. Mm. If you are spending the time and money it takes to build your own engine, the last thing you want to do is to leave metal chips, oil, or sludge inside your engine block. That can hinder performance, let alone cause major damage. A good collection of purpose-built engine cleaning brushes is an affordable way to get the job done right. This set of 12 from Moroso have stiff nylon bristles, which clean like wire, but without scratching your engine. It features a wide variety of brush diameters and handle lengths, so it's easy to get into those hard to reach places. You can also find specialized brushes, like these crankshaft oil brushes from Brush Research. Having the right tools to do the job makes all of the difference, and you can find these and other cleaning solutions at Summit Racing Equipment. Now that we know what manifolds we're going to be using, we'll go ahead and get them mocked up on the engine and start figuring out our exhaust. They do make a stock replacement Y pipe, but it's a little small, so we just decided to make our own. And we'll have two 90s here and a 45 here that will go into a vibrant performance Y pipe that we got from Summit Racing. It has a two and a quarter inlet and a three inch outlet. Then we'll 90 underneath the pan and then go up to our turbo. And that will complete our hot side. The idea of mock-up is to get everything into place exactly where you want it to be. We'll just tack weld everything for now in case we need to make any adjustments or changes later on. Four, okay, there right, right there. Got it? Yep. All right. Okay. Now on this side, I'm gonna sneak around there. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold the top so you don't burn your fingers. No, you're right there. You're good. somewhere yeah. about right there. Not your eyes. Yep. Go get this burned up. With the distributor out of the way, we can mock up where the turbo is going to sit. We're going to put it around this area because it's right out in the open. It will be easy to hook up on the dyno. If this engine ever goes into a vehicle, we'll have to re-engineer the entire system to fit. But for right now, we're trying to keep it easy. So we made this not to scale drawing to make a bracket to bolt to these four bosses. This is a good solid mounting place for it. And Jimmy down in Carcass took our highly technical drawing, burned some holes in it, put a bend in it, and even welded up some gussets. This will be a nice, secure place to mount the turbo. Just like the rest of the mock-up, we're temporarily mounting the turbo. How'd that bracket turn out? That was a well-designed, even though it wasn't scale. Yeah, so Jimmy made that work really good, not me, <laughs> but I uh, got this fully welded, so put this on and then figure out the rest. Yeah, shouldn't be a problem. We're way out in the open here. It's gonna be very, very easy to hook up to, so. Nice. And I slide that across here. It should fit pretty good. I got it tacked up right now. Just there. 
some more in there. Yeah. Yep. All right, this thing is square. How the hell did you get it square? Uh, a C clamp and an arbor press. That's very, very nice. Get that right there. Not bad. It, it, it'll fit. It's just good. So this yeah. is good down. It yep. has to be up on that, like there. Perfect. Right. It'll be like right. All right, good. Quick, get the welder. Now that we've got our hot side tacked up, we know where everything's gonna be. We also went ahead and mocked up our wastegate that we got from Summit Racing. Now, all we gotta do is take it all apart, weld it, and then put it back together again. Since we don't have to worry about fitting this system into a vehicle, at least for now, the fabrication process is pretty straightforward. All said and done, we probably have a few hours in mock-up and a couple hours of welding in this project. Up next, the inline six gets an EFI system that's ready for big power. The turbocharged Ford 300 is almost ready for the dyno cell. Everything has been mocked up and the turbo piping has been finished welded. Let's move on to final assembly. Good. Yep. Now that we have our hot side fully installed, we wanted to take a second and explain why we put the wastegate where we did. It's important that you don't put the wastegate at a right angle or an obtuse angle to the exhaust flow. You want it in line or on a bend like we have here. This is going to make the wastegate a lot more accurate when you're controlling the boost pressure. Most turbochargers require pressurized oiling. Just as important is a free-flowing and large oil return line. This will help keep your exhaust smoke-free. Something like that? Yep. We're almost ready to start our Ford 300, but there's a few components we gotta add first. Most importantly, how we're gonna mix the air-fuel ratio. Since we added a turbo and we're gonna go forced induction, we wanted to go with a throttle body EFI unit from Holly. This is their Sniper X-Flow unit, and although we just ran it on our little bitty 305, it's also gonna work great on our big six because it's good for up to 800 horsepower naturally aspirated, due to four 120 pound injectors. It's also good for 21 and a half pounds of boost because it has an integral two and a half bar map sensor. These units are super easy to use because they only take four connections to run and all the tuning and setup can be done with the handheld. You don't even need a laptop, even for boost controlled AFR and timing adjustments. We also need a way to get our charged air into our throttle body. So we got one of Holly's EFI carb hats painted it white to match the engine naturally. And with that, we should almost be ready to go. Sniper throttle body units will fit on a square bore flange or a spread bore flange, making them very versatile. What do you think of that right there? That's nice, you made that in the lathe? Yeah, a little neural action and everything, so. Oh, so how long did that take you? Um, not long. 20 minutes. We're using a charge air cooler from a previous diesel project. This contraption. This should be sized nicely for the inline six's power level. Up next, Pat goes over to the dark side. I think we need more boost. And I can't even believe I'm saying that. I feel like I, a, no, a, I mean, it's I'm... like an invasion of the body snatchers. Like that. The Ford 300 is in the dyno cell and we've outfitted the wastegate with a seven pound spring as a safe starting point for our dyno session.
boost. <laughs> All right. You, now you have a boost control on that right now, don't you? I do, and it's closed all, yeah, so that's two two pounds of boost, basically. Okay, two pounds of boost. Two and a half through peak torque, so. Now, we have good. we have some control over the boost. Go put something in it for boost. I don't, I don't know what that is. Yeah, that, I'm not that, sure what the increments are on that boost controller, so we're just gonna go probably one, maybe go, two. Go, go two clicks on it right yeah. now. Everything is ultra safe. Uh, air fuel ratio is 11.4. Oh, yeah. Everything looks good. How, yeah. many, how many clicks you put in it? Three, because I like to party. <laughs> That's a fun sound right there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, I made the difference. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That's a difference. That is a difference. Oh. <laughs> Heck, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. 436 pound-feet. That's me. 345 horse at 5,000. Go put like, go put some more clicks in it. Two more? Put two more in it. Put two more in it. We made a series of dyno runs, adding more boost each time. Eventually, I got a little greedy though. See what it does. I, 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 don't, I don't want to know what you did until afterwards. Nah, you don't. I need a bigger spring in it now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 453. How big, how big a change is that? Six clicks. We're, we are on a really light spring in there. Yeah, um, That's, uh, that is so. almost to six PSI. I think we need more boost. And I can't even believe I'm saying that. I feel like I, uh, no, I'm, I mean, it's like an invasion of the body snatcher or something like that because <laughs> I uh, yeah. naturally aspirated guy, so, uh, but I want to see this thing, I want to see it make some power. Yeah, let's go, let's do it. Oh, very nice. if I can do this without hitting well, the face. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, let me help you. I got a pair, I got a pair of gloves somewhere. <laughs> I can help you if you want. You're gonna take too long, you're old. Does this help when I do this thing? <laughs> I'm gonna get that other side on there. I'm gonna do it just like this. <laughs> it just looks awkward and takes forever. Normally, if, if it takes a bunch of spring pressure, you take this entire unit off mm -hmm. and go stick it in like an arbor press or a, a drill press or yeah. something that helps you compress that spring. Yeah, well, when you get into higher boost levels, because it's all about surface area, I mean, some of these are, you know, 100 pounds right. pressed. So there's no way you're doing it the way I just did it. But for these little bitty springs, it'll be okay. Everything's the same. Did you back that clicker off? Yeah, I backed it off so we could sneak up to it because okay. those springs together should be around 12 to 14 pounds. And I, right. think, I don't think we want to hit that all at once. No. So. <laughs> oh. oh my. Oh my. Five hundred forty pound feet. Oh my! Four hundred fifty-three horse. God. Now I saw it crack five hundred pound feet, and I stopped looking at the screen and started looking in there. I in started. It, I, I started made sure the oh, oil pressure was fine. Wow. I, I, I watched between the oil pressure and the torque meter. Yeah. I was watching in there. I'm waiting for maybe parts to fly out. That's wow. No parts gonna fly out. Maybe. Ten pounds of boost. Oh wow. That's a big jump. That's a huge jump. That was not exactly intentional. We're starting to get into the realm of I don't know what parts yeah. we'll take. Oh yeah. Head gasket. I don't know what the yep. this still stock take. head gasket. Cylinder block, right? Again, I'm worried about splitting a cylinder. Ooh, 497, 575 pound feet. Oh mm. my god. Mm. All right, how much boost was that? Oh, I don't know. I'm scared. That's 12. Okay, that was 12, yeah. Oh, that's spicy. We gotta do it. We'll put two more clicks in it. Okay. Oh my and, gosh. And I'm, now I'm getting scared. And then we're gonna stop. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and make the executive decision to make this the final run. It may I be the final run idea. anyway. I think that's a good idea, because <laughs> like, yeah. It might actually be. <laughs> oh, jeez. Come on, baby. I 
you see what it makes. What I were just, you worried about? I don't know. It, what it, it, were you it, worried what did about? It make? Oh my god! Five seventeen point eight. Five hundred ninety-seven pound feet. Oh, that's spicy. I, I, we're I, like we're like we're like so close. There is literally only one way to find out. You're right. Just two more clicks. It's nothing. It's, it's just two more. Well, it's it's you, just two more clicks. Yeah, you, you, you're you're a very bad influence, but uh, it's just two more know, clicks. It's just it's just two more clicks. It's just it's just two more clicks. Yeah. See. Put two yeah. More. Put two more in it. I recant my last statement and say that was the last poll. Yeah. This I talked to you. This is going to be the last poll. I think we're at the end of oh, our spring. I think we're on the wastegate there. Yep. I, I. Watch, watch this. Yeah, that's a good idea. We shut it off. Yeah. We have a 308 cubic inch. Inline six. Inline six Ford, 4.9 liter, old school, carbureted manifold. And this thing just made 522 horsepower and 597 pound feet of torque. Okay, so we went from 270 to 522 and from 338 to 597. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a high five. <laughs> oh. <laughs> For more information on anything you've seen on today's show, check out PowerNationTV.com.